Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the best strength build you can use and it almost makes you invincible. I basically use this setup to beat the entire game, so I know for a fact it can take out every boss and regular enemy fairly easily. Not to mention, I didn't even have this setup fully completed before doing so. I was pretty much missing half the items, if not more, and I was still able to plow through the game. I will mention I'm not going to be showing any boss fights due to spoilers because the game hasn't been out for too long, so I don't want to ruin anything. With that said, let's dive into it. Starting off with the weapons, the best choice I went for was the Iron Wafer's Hammer. At max level, this thing has the best scaling coming in at an S rating, so the more you level up your strength, the more damage this weapon is going to do. But this is something you get more into the mid game and not really an early game option, so before that, you can get the one that I was using to get me through the entire early game, mid game, and even some of the late game, because I didn't find out about this hammer until near the end, and that was the Faithful Bludgeon. It's going to be doing similar amounts of damage and since it's a grand hammer as well the moveset's going to be the exact same so when you do swap over to the iron wafers hammer later on it's going to feel like nothing has changed except for you doing some more damage is all so yes level this weapon up until you get the better hammer later on you could also use the anvil hammer it's got a much lower stat requirement to wield and it'll do similar damage again When you are using the hammers, you want to focus more on doing running heavy attacks or charged up heavy attacks. That's going to give you the best chance to one shot most enemies, stagger them, or at the very least take a very big chunk of health away. When it comes to the runes, I found they didn't matter too much. Like, yes, they increase the hammer's damage, but not by a significant amount though. Just throw on anything that increases its physical damage or strength scaling, and that's about it. Nothing too crazy here. Now, if you noticed in my offhand, I do have a shield equipped, but we don't actually use it. I have it equipped just so I could get some of the passive rune buffs from it. Again, things that increase my strength scaling some more to make the hammer do more damage. I'd recommend using the lightest shield you can find here. For me, I had the shield of thunder that weighs pretty much nothing, and it could socket the runes I had, so that was perfect. Not the most major thing in this build, well, the biggest thing in this setup aside from one or two shotting most enemies is being kind of invincible, but I'll get into that later on so stay tuned for it. Moving forward, I do use throwables for this build, and I actually use them quite a bit because they've been so good for so many different situations. I'd say these are probably a must-have thing. The first one is the Enhanced Lump Hammer. It's got a B-plus scaling and strength, costs 3 ammo to use, and it can stagger enemies easily. This thing does so much damage, it's my basic throwing attack to take down enemies that are too far away, or if I want to pick off some guys when I see a large crowd and want to thin them out before diving in. And the other throwable I use, which is kind of the complete opposite, I only use this for dealing with large crowds of enemies, and sometimes boss fights depending on how much the boss moves around, and that's the Corrupted Banner Javelin. Costing 4 ammo to use, but you don't actually throw it right at your target. You aim at their feet, and what this does is it pulses, damaging anyone that gets close enough to it. So when I'm fighting more than 2 or 3 guys at the same time, I'll throw this down and focus more on avoiding attacks while this does the damage for me. So one throwable for taking out single targets and one throwable for taking out crowds. The third one I use is kind of optional, like I have used it more than a handful of times where it did come clutch and that's the enhanced banner javelin of protection. Like the one before, you throw it on the ground and it creates an area of effect, but instead of doing damage, this one heals you and whoever else while standing in its zone. This one I do like to use for some boss fights when they're jumping around a lot and I can't hit them with my other throwables or regular attacks easily. I'll just toss this one down and stay in its field so when they do come up to me to fight, if I end up trading hits or roll too early, the damage won't be bad enough to use a health charge. Even when I'm running around in the game, I'll use this instead of a health charge since those are only refillable at vestiges and the javelin can be refilled with an ammo satchel or pouch that I pretty much find almost everywhere in the game.
continuing on, before I talk about how we almost become invincible and can flatten people easily, I want to mention the rings and pendants used for this setup. I kind of messed up, well, not really messed up, I just got lazy and didn't want to figure out how to do certain quest lines to get these items, so if you do get them, you'll deal even more damage than what you're seeing right now. So for the rings, grabbing the... Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this ring, it's going to increase our damage by 10% while two-handing our weapons and only when two-handing them. So don't try to one-hand it or power stance the hammers, even though it does a lot less damage when you are power stancing weapons, which I found was weird, but you know, I didn't create the game, I just play it, they do them. And the other one is the Melacquire's Ring. It makes you deal additional physical damage. How much? I honestly don't know because I don't have it and the wiki page doesn't say either. I would say it's safe to assume the damage buff is most likely around 10 to 20% max. Anything more or less would be overpowered or too underpowered. So both these rings will give you an extra 20% damage buff in total, if not a bit more. And I don't have either one of these. The build still works fantastic and like I said, it'll only get better. Finally, for the pendant, this one I actually do have because it doesn't require any quest and you can find it early on which is pretty nice. And it's the Warrior's Claw Pendant. It increases all physical damage and physical defense by 10%. I think that's honestly perfect for a strength theme build because we are swinging some massive weapons that take a bit of time to, you know, swing them. So there are going to be some instances when you trade hits with someone and this is going to help out a lot by not only negating the damage you would take but also making you win the trades by doing more damage as well. So that's about everything for the rings and pendant. Now let's get into how you become almost invincible. And for that, we're going to need the Umbreal Lamp, more exactly the Umbreal Eye of the Loche. What it does is while charging a heavy attack, all damage is received as wither damage and your posture cannot be broken. Since we do so much damage with one attack, we can get all of that damage we just took and turn into wither damage right back as health. And we can't get pushed aside or staggered because this makes our posture unbreakable. You can run around the game doing charged up heavy attacks and in theory never die. I say in theory because when you are fighting multiple guys at the same time, it's kind of hard to time your heavy attack and if they hit you after you've already swung, it doesn't count as wither damage and goes straight to your health bar. Taking on stronger enemies or bosses one on one and trading hits with them doing charged up heavy attacks is what you'll need to be invincible. Taking on multiple guys? Eh, not so much, but that's what the throwing weapons are for. And before I get into the stats, let's take a look at the armor. Ideally, you'll want to try to get some of the heaviest stuff for the most protection since we're going to be slow and trading hits, but obviously that's a bit hard to do when you're using the heaviest weapons in the game. So aiming for a mix of medium and heavy armor is going to be your best bet. I went with Tansered's helm, Pieta's armor, and leggings, and Fitroy's gauntlets. I also went for them for their looks as well, so you could probably find some better armor if you really dive into it, but I don't think which kind of heavy or medium armor you use is very important. And with the armor quickly covered, let's move on to the stats. When you're leveling up, it's honestly extremely straightforward. You want to focus just on leveling your strength for damage and vitality for health. You could do every two levels you put into strength, you put one into vitality for a nice balance of damage and health. You also need quite a few levels in strength to wield the weapon, so getting them in hand as fast as possible is what we need. After you put a bunch of levels in strength and vitality, and you feel comfortable with how much damage you can throw out and take, you can then level up endurance to wear some heavier armor and the bare minimum stats required is 18 strength to use the anvil hammer 28 strength to use the faithful bludgeon and 31 strength to use the iron wafers hammer at the end of it well if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to subscribe for more build related videos in lords of the fallen thanks for watching everyone and i hope i'll see you all in the next one